Hey everyone, December 2nd here, 2021, day after World AIDS Day, or as I renamed it yesterday, and AIDS Day. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, that's going to be my start to uh, giving a video every day until I get funding. I want to get funding for Southern Time Productions by the end of this month. It has to start, we have to start pre-production on Dreamer, on the Dreamer series uh, this month. Yeah, it's just everything my intuition for many reasons. We have to have this out by the end of December next year, the first season of Dreamer. And, um, yeah. And, yeah, anyways, that's going to happen. But even after we get funding this month and start pre-production this month, um, I want to still do a video every day. I want to connect. Finally, breaking out of my shell. You see, I keep looking away from the camera because... I'm inherently a, an introvert and I get shy looking into people. Um, it's something I wanted. So today's topic yesterday was an ending AIDS, right? We can do this now because of you equals you. Today's topic is uh, inner locus of control. Have you ever heard of that term? I remember reading it in um, social studies or something in grade eight or something and what's this term inner locus of control like it was a psychology uh section of the year or whatever and um and and i was like when i read that my heart sank because i knew i didn't have an inner locus of control there's an inner locus of control and an outer locus of control so inner locus is where you maintain your sense of self, your integrity, who you are, what you want, and nothing phases you from externally. You're, you're controlled from within, internally. And, uh, and the outer ex locus of control, which I am still struggling with, obviously, but uh, the way I'm in appearance, but inside, I've made a change over the, over the last... The last few years, especially the, the process really started for me where I started going in the opposite direction of being thrown about the, by the external events happening to me in the world. It was when I nearly died from AIDS in 2009. Spending six months in the hospital, coming out with lower spinal cord damage, that changes a person. It's like suddenly I'm just glad to be alive, right? And had gone through something incredibly spiritually transformational. And, uh, and I, I like, because I saw people next to me dying who were in their 80s and they were screaming like oh my god they were afraid to die and all this stuff and uh, you know arguing with their relatives and stuff and it's like you know it's like I don't want to go that way you know uh, you know like so I came out of the hospital never taking a day for granted again but the process didn't stop there you know I'm still learning like getting towards realizing that I can't let um our things affect me anymore. I got to stay true to who I am. And um, the first person, so I am, I am Dreamer. In the Dreamer series, the character Dreamer is based on my story, how I acquired HIV, uh, you know, and what living with it's been like for me, and the spiritual and social insights I've gained, and inner personal insights I've gained, not spiritual, I guess, uh, insights I've gained since uh, throughout my life, right? So, the first season goes from zero to, uh, uh, to, well, actually starts when Dreamer is 15, but he has memories that go back to when he's really young. Um, and that goes until he's 20 when he gets finds out that he's HIV positive. So that's, second season is from age 20 to 30. Third season is from 30 to 33 when he nearly ends. Uh, he doesn't know if he's dying from AIDS and... Um, and or when he is dying from AIDS actually and then uh, the fourth season is his recovery six years of recovery after the hospital until 2015 when Dreamer uh, moves back to Toronto and continues to pursue his dream and finally realizes it this year this December it has to happen this December so that's one of the reasons it has to happen uh, otherwise you know because the dreamer series really gives people hope my story is one of hope I'm a miracle that I'm, I'm alive right this is my lower spinal cord damage I walk in the forest with two canes but you know I'm a cripple basically you know they say it you know some people would say derogatorily but that's basically just a factual thing is that my body doesn't work the way it used to or like most people's do 
so I can't run anymore, for example. When I walk without the canes, I walk like a drunk. <laughs> it's going to fall over any second, right? So it's, uh, you know, but, you know, I believe the body can heal itself if in the right environment. I'm more inclined to the terrain theory of germ theory of disease than the germ theory of disease. The terrain theory of disease instead of the germ theory of disease. It's, you know, it totally changes your perspective on health. And, um, yeah. Anyways, that's another subject for another day. Back to the inner locus of control. So, um, yeah. So, uh, if you ever feel like you're being wanton throw, thrown by the universe every day or throughout the day, you're, you're having panic attacks or you're getting offended or having odd blip moments of joy, you're probably being affected by your environment. Things can set you off. And, um, yeah, and it's not a healthy way to live, you know, like, you know, for, for myself, my big things were um, addiction to pornography, for example. And, uh, and, you know, that's how I dealt with my HIV status after I tested positive. And, um, you know, the trauma of it all, you know, and it became an addiction. And, uh, and that's letting something externally control you. Like I became reliant on that to feel any joy in my life for decades, for decades um, since testing positive. I've been HIV positive for over 25 years now. Um, but, uh, you know, the last few years I realized I don't need that addiction anymore. It's like you don't need any addiction, anything that you're trying to make up for something externally, which you got to fix internally. And, um, yeah. So, um, yeah. And what, what's really my spiritual growth as I was raised Christian, um, but you know, I always struggled, struggled with it since I was, uh, a preteen, I started struggling. 12 years old, I started st struggling with it, and, um, and it's been back and forth throughout my life, and, you know, the guilt and fear and shame, you know, just didn't give me answers, and then uh, this, this year, this summer, actually, I finally um, listened to uh, someone talking about the great um, Vedic, Vedic culture in India. Um, the Bhagavad Gita I'm, I'm reading now and just every verse uh, it's just 18 chapters long but every verse is uh, just sublime and it's so full of wisdom from what I, I resonate with in my life and it talks about the same idea of having an inner locus of control don't be swayed by your desires or your fears right and um, yeah anyways I just encourage during this time our world is crazy as shit as everyone knows so just remember who you are and don't try to find solace from outer means, from addictions or from other people or blaming people or this, that, you know, just, just find that center within. Yeah, the, your, um, the center within, what's it called? Um, center point, that's the term, your center point, the chakra this chakra <laughs> all right take care everyone i'll talk to you with you tomorrow